Let's talk about how I got there for free. Was it even worth it? Why did I go? And what like were the takeaways? Here are some takeaways that I got from Afrotech as someone who went there for the first time and wants to relay the message to you, okay? Welcome to the Book of Dez. I'm Desiree Jones. I am a creative techie, content strategist, video editor, and the author of Hey Nice to Meet You, the networking manual, which teaches professionals how to network and maintain relationships. Welcome to my channel. It's all about professional development, lifestyle, healthy living, and multimedia. And today we're gonna dive more into the professional development aspect by talking more about Afrotech. Have you been? What were your thoughts? So there's been a lot of talk on social media about Afrotech. Most of those people didn't even go, but I went. I went for the first time and I went for free. So I'll show you how I did that later on in the video. But today we're gonna really break down like what Afrotech is, was it even worth it? Why did I go? And what like were the takeaways? And these are takeaways that most people don't really talk about. Um, but if you were to decide to go to Afrotech this the following year, um, here are some things to consider with before you go, and that can help you kind of navigate Afrotech a little bit easier. And if you want to know more about different conferences or reviews, um, I also do book reviews. Subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to talk about. Um, I also love movies. So I'll probably talk more about Wicked. Wicked just came out. Oh, such a great movie. So I'll probably do more videos about that. And I will be doing a recap video of my experience at Afrotech. It will be posted probably after this video. So if you haven't tuned into it, check it out and it'll show you my full on experience of Afrotech from my perspective. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's dive into Afrotech. What is Afrotech? Who cares? Well, Afrotech is a tech conference for African Americans. Um, if you don't know, the tech industry doesn't really have a lot of black folks in it. So Afrotech is pretty much a community for African-Americans who are in tech, who don't really see people that look like them. So Afrotech is a community. It is a, spa a safe space for African-Americans who want to dive more into tech, who are in tech. If you're in data engineering, if you're an engineer, if you work in, you know, like health tech, any type of ed tech, any type of tech, um, this conference is for you. But so I want to explain how I got there and why I ended up going there, because it's not just it is for people in tech, but it's also for founders and investors and companies who either are looking for investors or who are investors looking to buy into certain companies. So I am launching an app called Hey Follow Up. So it, it is a stem from my book, Hey Nice to Meet You, the Networking Manual. You can check out the app below. And it pretty much helps you navigate how to follow up with folks because one part of networking people miss out on is following up. So I went to Afrotech because I got selected to pitch my app to a bunch of investors. So I was able to pitch my app, pitch my idea. Although I didn't win, I was able to experience and get so many contacts from people who are, you know, cool with me to this day and are excited for what is in store for me. And I will continue to keep going. So I went there from the perspective of a founder and I went there for the perspective of an entrepreneur. So I wasn't necessarily looking for a job. I was looking more for, um, for income, for money to help launch my company. And I will also be doing a Kickstarter for my app launching soon. So that will be in the comments as well. If you are looking for an app that helps you network and wants to help you kind of build that, this app will be for you. So if you're interested in learning more, check out more in the bio description. So Afrotech, I went from a, as a founder, I went um, for the perspective of, you know, pitching my company and it was my first time. So I was already excited to just be a part of this experience. So here are some takeaways that I got from Afrotech as someone who went there for the first time and wants to relay the message to you, okay? What are some things that I learned from Afrotech? So the first thing I learned, it involves networking. As you know, I'm the author of Hey Nice to Meet You, the networking manual, teaching professionals how to network. So if you wanna learn more about networking, check it out. But at any conference, but especially at Afrotech, it is a really big, like it was at a convention center in Houston. So there was, ample opportunity to network. But one thing I learned at this tech conference is, and most conferences, but specifically Afrotech is, 
You know, when you are moving in purpose and you have kind of like a plan or idea of who you want to connect with, you don't have to force it, to be honest, because depending on your um, like what ticket you got or even even if it doesn't depend on the ticket, most cases when you are put in rooms, people and energy like they do gravitate toward you. So, for instance, uh, when it comes to networking, I pitched my company, right? I pitched my company, which is great. It was um, with the host of Founders Fest, Start Out to Venture for Them. And I met a couple people there, right? So that was great. That was the first night of Afrotech for me. So um, the second day, it was a Friday, right? And the conference was pretty much over. And I was kind of just walking around, not really trying to do too much. There were so many events happening. It was actually insane. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just walk around. Let's just see what's going on. And as I was just walking around, no expectation, I ran into someone that I connected with at the pitch competition. And we just got to talking and somehow I ended up going to a Rockets game. Like I was at a Rockets game, club seats, like enjoying the game. But guess what? We were still networking. We were still talking. We were still talking about business. We we're getting to know each other. So the cool part about networking is networking doesn't have to be at the conference. The real networking actually starts after the conference, like at the events that you're going to. And it doesn't always have to be professional events. It can be at a basketball game. It can be at like a golf course. It can be at like a lounge, you know. So networking is really about just being who you are, being authentically yourself and showing up for yourself and, you know, kind of bragging about yourself a little bit. Talk more about what you do, why you're here. And the cool part about networking at Afrotech is they look like you, right? Like it's already kind of relaxed. You're able to just kind of be free, be yourself and truly explore. The fashion, like I showed up, I look good. I made sure that I dressed the part, I dressed the tea, but it's really about expressing yourself and not having to worry about being in like a corporate box. This is Afrotech, it's black folks. There was swag surfing, there was Caribbean folks. Like we were having a good time mixing and mingling and just really enjoying each other's company. So networking doesn't have to be at the conference, right? It can happen after the conference. It can happen after the workshop. It can happen after hours. So when you're networking, remember, remember to just express who you are, be yourself, and don't worry about having to be so buttoned up. You don't have to be buttoned up. Like at the end of the day, we're all human. So if you start off ap approaching people as a human first, and as someone who is just excited to be at Afrotech, that's already a good start. Now, here's another thing that I learned, okay? So when it comes to Afrotech and most conferences, you got to pay to play, okay? You got to pay to play. So what, is, what does pay to play mean? Pay to play means that if you want to get the most out of a tech conference or out of any conference, you might have to spend a little bit more bread, okay? So prime example for me, I decided to, you know, hotels, when am I going to go? I decided to stay at the hotel that was right across the street. OK, right across the street from the convention center. It was a little pricey. Yes, it was. But to me, it was worth it. OK, why? Because I didn't have to worry about the stress of getting to Afrotech. The traffic was crazy. I didn't have to worry about being late to certain things because I could just go right across the street. If I was exhausted, I can go right across the street and go home or go to my room, decompress, take a shower, change my outfit, you know, and go back outside. Compare it to being like an hour away or 30 minutes away. Like I didn't have to be as stressed. I'm all about being stress free. So that's, that's one thing when it comes to pay to play. Second thing, pay to play, um, there were different tiers. So you had general admission, you had corporate, you had executive, um, and then you had like all access, right? Now, of course, all access, stupid expensive, but hey, if you got it, you got it. Um, I personally feel like if you want to really get the most out of, out of it, you should try to shoot for corporate or executive. General mission is cool, but again, if you were trying to meet some people, if you're trying to network, if you're trying to find a job, if you're trying to find investors, if you are trying to really make something shake at Afrotech, you're going to have to pay to play. Um, a lot of the events, you got to pay to play. It costs money. Like You got to pay like $20 for this, $50 for this. So... When I say pay to play, you're going to have to pay to get access to certain things. And that's really for most conferences. But if you're looking for a job, if you don't have a job, there are ways around like not having to pay for certain things. But again, you still need to have some type of something to bring with you because you just never know. 
Um, pay to play also means like what what value do, do you provide? How can you leverage your skills or leverage what you have to create access or um, create something? I know somebody, they created um, a Afrotech GPT. So they were able to create a whole GPT specifically around the tech conference and that provided access, you know? So you got to pay to play. You have to you know, spend the bread to get ahead in certain instances. So believe it or not, that's, you gotta do what you gotta do. But when it comes to networking, sometimes with networking, you can kind of maneuver around that. So if you wanna know more about networking, get the book, I promise you, it will help you out and will get you ready for next year. And the last thing about Afrotech specifically, a lot of the events are not near Afrotech. Like they are not near the convention center you're gonna have to drive like 20 minutes out 30 minutes out um sometimes like 35 so if you know somebody in houston you should probably connect with them um before the conference so that way at least if you have to pay for ubers or have to pay to get around um you can be in a space where you don't have to stress too much about that again you got to pay to play but if you know somebody in houston link up with them if you know that you want to maneuver around you want to get around you actually might have to uh rent a car right so it just depends on the level of where you're at if you feel like you want to go to all these events again you got to pay to play if you feel like you don't want to go to all these events like for me I didn't want to go to all these events like I again I end up going to a Rockets game right I end up going to an, an after party uh all this for free so you just have to connect with the right people and honestly they can probably hook you up so again networking can kind of help you maneuver through all of this and also you got to be intentional so if you're looking for a job if you're looking for investors you got to be where they are right so if there is a LinkedIn or a Microsoft um, like lounge or, or party or something afterwards, you gotta figure out a way to get there, right? If you are an investor or you are looking for companies, you gotta go to pitch competitions. You gotta go where the people are. So again, you have to be very intentional about where you're going. And once you're intentional about where you're going, I hate, I, it's really interesting, but like you manifest that and somehow some way things just kind of like, they work out, they just work out. Trust when I say that. I'm, I'm living proof of it. It's, it's really crazy, but it's true. So those are the three things that really stood out to me um, about Afrotech. Besides, of course, following up and, you know, connecting with the right people and showing up for yourself and dressing the part. But those are, those are simple things. Let's talk about how I got there for free. So the cool part about what I do is I work in multimedia, but I also am a part of a membership. So the membership program is called The Gathering Spot. They are based in DC or based in Atlanta. Their headquarters in Atlanta, but they have locations in DC, Atlanta, and um, LA, and Houston soon. Ooh. So they actually had an event in Houston. I didn't end up making it, which is sucks. But because I was a member, they had a contest. So the contest was like, you know, talk about something about The Gathering Spot and you know, post a video about it, blah, 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 blah. And you know, I did it. And I think I was the only one that did it. And because of that, I, I was able to get a free ticket. Like I, I got a free ticket and it was corporate. It wasn't general admission, it was a corporate ticket. And I was just elated, I couldn't believe it. So some, the moral of the story of that is, sometimes there are ways to get to certain conferences. You just got to be on the lookout right? There are ways you can go to certain conferences. I know Google has a scholarship program specifically for certain uh, conferences, including Afrotech you should uh, apply for. Um, some, talk, some conferences have their own ways. Like if you can become an ambassador, if you can become a volunteer, like there are ways you can maneuver around like getting in, getting like paying for a conference. You just have to be open to um, the hustle and open to the work that might have to go into it. So the opportunities are out there. You just have to be ready to take them by storm and just shoot your shot. Shoot your shot and you never know where it's going to land. But you won't, you won't, you know, you, you got to get in the game first. You got to get in the game first. So when it comes to Afrotech or any conference, get in the game. Once you're in the game, you're one step closer to winning, baby. Okay. So we're, we're on a winning team. We win over here. 
So if you want to be in the winning team, you want more access to, to learning how to win, you know, subscribe, let's check in. Well, I'll talk more about Afrotech. It, it was a fantastic experience. And um, I probably would go back. Now, hopefully next year they have a contest. I'm going to try to get it. But at the end of the day, who knows what can happen in a year? I'm shoot. I might even host next year. I'm I'm very excited. So I'm looking forward to you know continuing to do more in tech and um, you know kind of pivot and you know dive more into my passions, my purpose, which it involves tech and it involves networking. So it's a little bit of both. But that's me. That was my experience at Afrotech. And if you have any questions about Afrotech, your experience, or, you know, you want to talk about Afrotech, put in the comments, like, what did you think of Afrotech? Would you want to go next year? Um, and let me know your thoughts and I can go live and we could talk more about Afrotech if you have questions. But I enjoyed it from, from the perspective of somebody that is like from an investor or a tech perspective or a founder perspective. I thought it was fantastic. I met a lot of founders. I met a lot of entrepreneurs. And it was just enlightening to see more people who are in the exact same boat as me. We're trying to build something great. And at the end of the day, it was worth every penny. So it's an investment. And if you want to invest in yourself, you have to take the risk. So take the risk, pay to play, invest in yourself, and get out there. And I'll see you next year at Afrotech. Happy networking. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Desiree Jones, but you can call me Des. I'm a multifaceted queen who believes that with faith, community, stamina, and the courage to keep evolving and learning, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. From launching my media career to writing my first book, staying consistent at the gym, and perfecting my style, navigating life's chapters takes time, but who says you can't have fun along the way? A new chapter has just begun. Welcome to The Book of Des.